What's so alluring about vintage cars? Even non-car enthusiasts like them. And what does this have to do with clothing? So the first career I ever wanted was when I was 10 years old, I wanted to be a car designer. I invented my own company called Ronin. What the hell? Wait, it's not called Ronin. It's Rogan. Wow. Some designs were really good, but most of them were just way too over the top and or cheap, complete knockoffs of other supercars like Koenigsegg. But hey, I was a kid. But as I've gotten older, my appreciation for vintage cars has become stronger and stronger and stronger to the point now where my dream car is any sports car from the 50s or 60s. We're gonna get specific Shelby Cobra. Oh my gosh. Or a Jaguar E-Type. Oh. So I've been pondering as I normally do. Oh, that's cold. Oof. Yeah, bam. Okay. And it got me thinking, do I love classic cars because I love classic style? Or do I love them for a different yet connected overarching reason? Because I know I'm not the only one who loves these two things together. They usually seem to go hand in hand. Well, now I believe that they're connected because they share in the same philosophy. And I got three points to prove my case. First case is their timeless design. Now, when I say timeless, I don't mean literally timeless. I've already talked about that before. Every item that we're wearing now will go away or change a lot in the next century or two. I mean, we ain't wearing togas anymore. I mean, some people do. I'll be honest, in a way, I wish we still did. When I go to the beach, I always wrap my towel a certain way. But there are still classic pieces that we still wear and have worn unchanged since before the birth of the baby boomers. You know we're talking old. And they still look just as good now as they ever did. Maybe even better. That's rare. And it's the goal of every good fashion design. Or maybe the goal of someone who's very passionate about their style. But the same can be said about vintage cars. People love them. Someone who doesn't give a rat's boom about modern cars will still turn their head when they see a car like a Shelby Cobra and they'll go, Hey, did you see that car? Wow, that's nice. I like that. That's a nice car. That's pretty. I like the color. <laughs> They're not wrong. There's something about the shape, the colors, the details that make it so magnetic. It's more artistically done than most of the cars you see nowadays. Nearly everything you see on them is a work of art, and it's intentional and it's practical. It's the true definition of art. I've said it before, the word art comes from the Greek word techni, which also means tech. It means the same thing. Both classic style and vintage cars have both ascended beyond trends. I mean, just look at this pic. When was it taken? I'll give you a few seconds to figure it out. Okay, time's up. It's new. But you can't tell. Everything is beautifully classic. Even the architecture. But it looks super bad A. And just as much now as it did back then. Now, the second thing that they both share is, of course, superior craftsmanship. You know when you get a vintage vehicle, you're not only paying for a beautiful design that speaks to you, you're paying for that fantastic raw quality. <laughs> like the boomers say. Back in my day, you didn't have all this fancy electronic crap. It was just raw manual goodness, man. As tiresome as that is hearing boomers say that on repeat, they're right. They're not wrong. You can't drive these things aimlessly without thinking about it like any other car. It forces you to think about it. Sorry, pal. You'll get on to it. And that's what's great about it. You're there for the drive. Yes, it does get you from point A to point B, but it lets you enjoy that journey without having to listen to podcasts or music. You're there for the ride itself. Thought and care was put into all that. And it's the exact same thing with classic clothing. The attention to detail, the craftsmanship, the power you feel when you wear it. If you do wear it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So you put two and two together, driving your sick Jaguar E-type convertible with your leather jacket on and driving gloves. Ooh. Oh. Sorry, I'm getting a little too too excited there. Ooh. Point number, number three. three is only enough competitive pricing. I'm not saying any of these things are cheap. You want a handmade suede jacket, it's going to cost you more than a few dollars. If you want a 61 Jaguar E-Type, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. But compare the price to cars and clothes today, and you'll start to understand something. You'll see the balance between the value of them and the quality that you're paying for. I also think that people are just super used to saying uber cheap prices. And they don't realize that quality is a 1 out of 10. And that a lot of times the process isn't all that ethical in their making, if you know what I mean. Most of the time we're paying cheap for junk. So with these, you start to see real value, so to speak. You start to see things at their true worth. And there's also something about knowing how it was made and how much care was put into it that just enhances the overall experience. 
Okay, but see, you know what? Now I actually have a problem with this video right here. See, before I was content driving my car. I love that thing. But now, this made me want to look up videos of Shelby Cobras on YouTube. It's kind of like a crush of a girl you had in high school, and you see her after college, and you're like, oh, you're reminded why you did in the first place. Now with these Shelby Cobras, I want one. No, I need one now. I need one. A lot of the old boomers in my town, they drive all these nice vintage sports cars, and now the next time I see them, I'm going to start drooling like some rabid squirrel. Better start saving money. I am becoming spoiled. This is not good. This is not good. At least you do. As long as you work for it. As long as you work for it.